Trusted viewers, welcome to another episode of Science and Spirituality, where we will feature an interview with Laura Eisenhower, the great-granddaughter of Dwight D. Eisenhower, who served as President of the United States from 1953 to 1961. Miss Eisenhower describes herself as a global alchemist, cosmic mythologist, artist, and earth advocate. Supreme Master Television had the opportunity to interview Miss Eisenhower during the October 2011 Conscious Life Visionary Expo in Los Angeles, California, USA, where she presented a talk entitled Extraterrestrials and the Eisenhower Legacy. Laura Eisenhower believes that while in office, President Eisenhower met with extraterrestrials. In a January 20th, 2011 online article, she wrote for All News Web entitled my great-grandfather, Ike, knew about UFO and alien visits to Earth. She writes, I am a great-granddaughter of President Dwight D. Eisenhower, and I should say from the start that I am fairly certain Ike was aware of aliens visiting Earth. In so many ways, it was obvious. For starters, there were the little comments here and there. Mamie, my great-grandmother and former First Lady, was even said to have divulged something about the topic to the father of noted ufologist Ed Grimsley, a distant relative, for instance. Miss Eisenhower said that she too had been in touch with extraterrestrials and seen UFOs. I've seen weird stuff in the sky. I had a visitation when I was a kid that was preparing me for this path that I've been on. They, they were this luminous race. They didn't really tell me who they were. I believe they were Andromedan or Arcturian. When she was younger, Miss Eisenhower did not like to reveal her last name or connection to her great-grandfather. But as time went on, she became comfortable with the public knowing her background. Well, um, I've always had a very, very profound mission since I was a child. I knew what I was here to do on this planet. And uh, I also felt that in order for me to really get a grip on me, separate from my family, that I didn't want to wind up taking a route in my life that was connected to that name and where it is today, uh, where I am coming from a place that's much more connected to the warrior side of it, connected to um, really completing a legacy on a personal level and on a level that connects to him as president. So I wanted to wait until I got into a certain level on my path in order to be able to bring that name in and how it uniquely relates to me and my own work in connection to um, him as a person and also to my whole family uh, as a voice uh, of this ancestral line um, that isn't so much uh, based on what I grew up in but based on myself as a multidimensional being who has had my own particular path that has put me in such a family. Uh, so I just felt that I didn't want that sort of attention until I really had solid truth um, as far as facts, as far as having a grip on my own soul mission, so that if I were to be asked questions, that I would be able to clearly speak on certain subjects without um, having too much gray area or too much uh, lack of information to be able to be very concise about the information I'm bringing forward. Miss Eisenhower believes our world has lost its natural order as the feminine energy has been overwhelmed by the masculine energy and that this must change for the planet to be uplifted in consciousness. She says this divine feminine energy is represented by a goddess called Sophia. I'm here to reveal many, many other truths connected to this, to the goddess Sophia, Gaia, the planetary body. If we look at the planetary body, Gaia, it's a living organism, it's a cosmic being, it's a multidimensional planet that connects to source energy, that connects to the whole um, cosmos, you know, all races and everything in between. And um, it's a feminine energy in a lot of ways, but it's also, of course, merged with the male um, as far as sacred unions concerned, as, as far as the arch archetypes are concerned. But we find the stories in these myths, even though the myths have been tampered, if one reads between the lines and looks at their own life and looks at the real history and really reads into it all, it's actually very simple and we don't have to let it get us all confused. We can just simply see a being that has wholeness, that has been split, where the masculine and feminine are out of balance, the powers are out of balance, the feminine is kicked to the side, the male energy has control, and, you know, this isn't even to blame a gender. The divine male has been targeted. His energy has been targeted. He's bought into a program. Feminine has bought into a program. Both genders have lost their way in a lot of senses. But I think the divine male has been just as targeted. The reason there's attention on the divine feminine is because it's been hidden, whereas the empowerment has been to the lower male. And it's about really the divine masculine and feminine waking up and forming union. 
I only give attention to divine feminine in the sense of her story, but when I present it to the world, it's never about matriarchy or the feminine taking over. It's about coming into balance and helping men awaken to their feminine, which helps them be in their divine masculine and helping the women wake up to their divine masculine so they can be the warrior and not the victim because victim consciousness has really made a lot of women stuck. How can we help restore this lost balance? Ms. Eisenhower feels part of the answer involves conducting introspection and re-examining our lifestyles. Yes, it's important to just, you know, wake up every morning, set your intention, find your center, you know, recognize where your thoughts are, where your beliefs are, how you're treating others, how you're treating yourself, what you're putting into your body. Um, it's very important to make sure you're doing, you know, heavy metal detoxes. It's so important to stay aligned with nature, to realize that there's incredible energies from the galactic core that are raising our consciousness and raising our vibrations so that we can ascend. Um, and so when we harness our energy and we call it back to ourselves, we reclaim that creative energy, we assist Gaia and we act as her immune system. We increase our frequency, we connect, and we, you know, learn the golden rule, treat one another with respect, love, and compassion. Laura Eisenhower is deeply interested in time travel and teleportation. She says that technologies related to these fields are currently being used on Earth and that this fact should be disclosed to the world. There's programs in the government um, that have been using time travel and teleportation, particularly Project Pegasus, basically um, utilizing wormholes and stargates. Uh, they are like tunnels that connect us to the past and into the future. And um, UFOs are time travel machines in a sense. Um, and there's about eight different types of teleportation time travel technologies, uh, one of which is looking glass, which are um, cylinder seals uh, a little bit after Sumerian times that have been planted um, and used in order to be able to view future and past events, which is a little bit different than the other time travel technologies. But that's one form of how they're able to manipulate timelines. Other time travel teleportation technologies connect to the radiant energy field, being able to jump through a vortex, a portal, um, and, and, and enter a, and, and go to a completely different place. Uh, Andrew Bishago was uh, teleporting from San Diego to New York in three minutes. Um, he teleported to Mars in about 20 minutes through jump room. Uh, through chronovisors, it creates a hologram that you're able to interact with that goes all the way into the past. He was even able to see the dinosaur era. Um, but then there's, you know, the type of teleportation where you're actually taken back, and that's um, going through a wormhole. And um, I'm not a physicist, so I, I don't quite understand the mechanics behind it, but it's Tesla-based technology. So you're able to, you know, journey through a tunnel into the past and, and through, you know, present time locations, you know, from one place to the next. And so, of course, this would save a lot of money. This would transform our world if we are using these technologies for our planet, to benefit our planet, to help those in need. This planet is a multidimensional planet. So there are natural stargates. There used to be a lot of journeying between, you know, this planet to other star systems. And it was normal that, you know, you would be on Earth and go elsewhere. If it was open to all of us, we'd be a civilization that would be interacting with our universal family, with other races and beings. Our appreciation, Ms. Laura Eisenhower, for sharing your perspectives on extraterrestrials, teleportation, and the urgent need to restore natural order on our planet. May you always have peace in your heart and blessings from the divine. For more information on Laura Eisenhower, please visit www.cosmicgaia2012.com. Wondrous viewers, thank you for joining us on this week's episode of Science and Spirituality. Coming up next is Words of Wisdom after Noteworthy News. Let all people across the world now join hands in love and friendship. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash ss.